positivo. Y suplicamos de manera especial que tu santa bendita palabra venga con unción, Padre Santo, que tu palabra venga en nuestra vida, Señor Padre del Cielo, que este mensaje sea, Señor, de una bendición para tu pueblo, para tu iglesia, Padre Santo, aquellos que están en, por medio de Facebook, Padre Santo, y su Padre Amado, trae, Señor, con bendición, Señor, que tu santa bendita palabra de libre manera obstáculo, Padre Santo, para que mi palabra haga la obra, Señor, para que yo sea el hombre, Padre Santo, de quitar toda incredulidad, Señor, en su vida, Padre Santo, y luego pedimos que esta palabra venga, Señor, en el palabra, por el poder del Espíritu Santo, Señor, que luce el hermano Juan, Señor, para que él, Señor, pueda, Señor, ser su mente, su mano, Padre Santo, y luce el Padre Amado, úsalo para que honre su gloria, Señor, queremos que le llamemos que su palabra venga, Señor, Of righteousness, 
And put your trust in the Lord. Amen. Pon tu confianza, confianza en el Señor. Dice aquí la palabra de Dios. It says, if there be many that say, who will show us any good? Lord, lift thou up the light of thy countenance upon us. It says, thou hast put gladness in my heart. Amen. Tú has puesto gozo en mi corazón, Señor. No pase lo que pase, Dios es el que pone el gozo en nuestro corazón. El gozo no viene por, por, por dentro de nosotros, viene por medio del Señor. Amen. Amen. That's why believers in Christ have joy. That's why they have peace in their hearts because it is God that puts it inside them. Amen. It is God who dwells in them. Amen. And it says, put peace in them, put joy inside of me. Amen. It says, thou hast put gladness in my heart more than in the time that their corn and their wine increased. In other words, you have put more joy in my heart even in, in the trials. You have put more joy and peace in my heart uh, more than in times when blessing. Amen. There's times, there, a lot of people wonder why are we just calm? Why are we are in peace during this trial and turmoil, during this pandemic? Why am I in peace? Why am I in, in joy? Because joy and peace comes from the Lord. Amen. During these times, God puts a lot of joy in us during times of trial. And he says, you have given me more joy, more gladness, more than in the time when I had blessing, more than the time when there was corn, more than the time when the wine was increased. Amen. <laughs> and he, God, gives, God gives us his peace. Right? Not what the world gives. Does he give us peace? The Lord, the peace of the Lord Jesus is what he gives us. Joy and peace of the Lord. Amen? And it says here, and it goes on. I will both lay me down in peace and sleep, for thou, Lord, only makest me dwell in safety. Amen? All of us are in safety under the Lord. That's why when I pray, brothers and sisters, I pray for a hedge of protection around us. Amen? So we can sleep soundly, so we can sleep with no worries, so we can sleep in peace in the Lord. Amen? Praise God. The song introduces us to the first five assignments to the director of the worship. We want we find that in the superscription of the song. To the chief musician, it says. Amen. There's another another word that is noted there. The word is neganoth. It is, literally means a uh, meaning of smiting. Amen. There are other songs that are connected with this word also in, in chapter 4, chapter 6, verse 54, so on and so forth. There's also a connection with Psalms 3 and Psalms 4. Psalms 3 is a mourning song in verse ch chapter 3, verse 5. And Psalm 4 is designated as an evening song. Amen. As we see on verse, on verse 8. In Psalm 73, David is running from his own son Absalom and is in physical danger. The character of chapter 4 in Psalm 4 changes a bit in David that is now in a place where there's malicious slander and lies being thrown at him. Aquí podemos ver que, que, que David está teniendo una experiencia cuando la gente está contra él. Amen. Hay muchos que están hablando este mal de él. Amen. ¿Cómo, cómo tenemos que responder nosotros cuando alguien habla mal de nosotros? Cuando alguien tra trata de destruir nuestro integ nuestra integridad. Cuando alguien está tratando de destruir nuestra este, reputación. Amen. There's many people that try to destroy a man's reputation, right? Someone with, and it all starts with rumors, right? How should we respond? ¿Cómo tenemos, tenemos que responder cuando alguien está este, hablando mal de nosotros? Amen? Señor, How Señor, should we behave? Amen? How should we respond to the lies thrown at us? It, it is in his reputation that is under fire instead of his physical person here in, in Psalms chapter 4. All of us have been in situations where our character has been slandered and maligned. Real enemies were using their tongues on us to destroy us. Amen. James chapter 3 verse 1 through 12 is the place in the Bible that tells us about the deadly nature of the tongue. Amen. If ever there were a time that we needed sanctified, holy, and restrained and guarded tongues, it is now in this society that we live out there. Amen? Right now in the times of, of social media, right, where even anyone can comment and put any kind of post that they feel like and get away with it. Amen? 
People can slander you. People can bully you. Uh, it's called cyberbullying. It's a reality, brothers and sisters. People can cyberbully you online, and they can get away with it, and many are hurt the word to where they end up committing suicide because of it. Why? Because the tongue hurts. The tongue uh, starts a fire that consumes people. Amen? That destroys people. Amen? Hallelujah. Hay que tener cuidado con nuestra lengua, porque puede lastimar a una persona, ¿verdad? Aquí, Santiago capítulo, aquí en el libro de Santiago capítulo 3, habla de eso, del peligro de la lengua. Amen. La, el peligro de, 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 de que es lo que decimos de otra persona. Amen. Puede destruir a la persona. Ahorita vivimos un tiempo, este, este, un tiempo de internet, ¿verdad? Es, es, en redes sociales, donde cualquier persona puede poner cualquier cosa en, el, en, en Facebook o lo que sea. Y, y pueden ser cosas malas, pueden ser este, cosas que duelen, pero la gente lo hace como quiera porque tienen la libertad de, de decir, lo, decir lo que les da la gana, ¿verdad? Es un gran peligro porque hay muchachos y muchachas que han, se han suicidado porque alguien le ha dicho algo mal. A lo que les duele, ¿verdad? So, hay un peligro de la lengua. Tenemos como, como seguidores de Dios, tenemos que tener cuidado, ¿verdad? De no este, causar a alguien que tenga depresión. ¿Verdad? It destroys. The tongue destroys. It says, the tongue is a little member. It boasts great things. It can cause a great fire. It's a world of iniquity. Amen. That's what the tongue says. It says it defiles the whole body. Amen. It sets on fire the course of nature. And it sets on fire. It is set, it is set on fire by hell itself. It cannot be tamed. It is an unruly evil. It is full of deadly poison. Amen. Una palabra que dices una persona puede ser un gran veneno para la persona. ¿Verdad? Y los puede lastimar profundamente. ¿Verdad? Es lo que a Santiago describe que es la lengua del humano. Uh, with the same tongue, we can bless the Lord. But with the same tongue, we can curse someone else. Con esta misma lengua podemos a la, este, bendecir al Señor. Con esta misma lengua podemos este, mal maldecir a una persona. ¿verdad? Tenemos que tener cuidado. We have to be careful what we say. Amen. Oh, Santo el Señor, says, a rumor can wipe out a person's reputation. And that is what David is contending with in Psalms chapter 4. David will pour out his lament to the Lord about what they are doing to him and what they're saying about him. Amen. With their vicious gossip and caustic rumor mongering and destructive words. Is, that's why God says that, that that's why uh, gossiping, that's why gossip is a sin. Es por eso el, el, los rumores es un pecado, hermanos. Lastima y destruye reputaciones y el carácter de una persona. Dicen mentiras que no son verdad. ¿Verdad? Es así. Es un gran pecado, hermanos. Es por eso la, este, bueno, la palabra en inglés, no sé si es este, el caso de esa argüendería, cuando anda diciendo cosas que no son verdades de otra persona. Ese es un pecado. ¿Verdad? Eso es, lo que estaba, eso es lo que David estaba teniendo experiencia. El, la gente andaba haciendo argüenderos contra David. Estaban diciendo mentiras sobre él. Estaban tratando de destruir su carácter, ¿verdad? They were trying to destroy his reputation, his character, his integrity. Right? Amen? Santo Señor, people are doing that now. Saying unscrupulous things. It says David will pour out his lament to the Lord about what they are doing to him with their vicious gossip and destructive words. There are, there are untold uh, uh, masses of people who have been destroyed by tongues that were unscrupulous and uncaring. That is what David was crying out to the Lord for. Is he needed the presence and approval of God more than physical deliverance? Amen. Es lo que David aquí le andaba pidiendo al Señor que lo libera de, de esos ataques contra él. No era eh, aquí. El, en Salmos, Salmos capítulo 4 no está pidiendo que lo rescate físicamente, pero que lo rescate de, de las malas palabras que estaban hablando contra él. ¿verdad? Lord, rescue me from, from the slander against me. Amen. So, so here uh, with, with PC Craig, Craig he said of the Psalm chapter 4, it says, It is a psalm, and I quote, It is a psalm which reflects the anguish of the innocent and the oppressed or the righteous suffer. Thus, it is a particularly important kind of psalm 
for it addresses a fundamental human experience, the experience of injustice, suffering, and oppression. These kinds of attacks can be summed up in this way, brothers and sisters. Injustices that heaped on that are undeserved. False accusations to have that have no basis. Amen? Slanders, slandering words that hurt the heart. Amen? When someone seeks to advance their own cause and seeks to get us out of their way. Amen? There's a lot of that going on. Hay gente que anda tratando de, 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 de sacarlos fuera de su lugar, ¿verdad? Anda tratando de, 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 de tratar de, de corrernos de nuestro trabajo a veces, diciendo mentiras, cosas que no son de verdad, ¿verdad? Esas son las experiencias humanas que uno, a veces como seguidor del Señor, también les pasa, ¿verdad? Eso, puso, eso pasa mucho. Your reputation comes under fire, right? I'm, I'm, it says, I am borrowing the outline by John Phillips from his commentary on his book called Exploring Psalms. This psalm can be divided with some key words. Salvation, sanctification, sacrifice, psalm, and security. The first key being salvation. Esta, este salmo puede estar dividido de cinco, de cinco palabras exactas. Salvación, santificación, sacrificio, el canto, alabanza al Señor y seguridad. Amen. The first key is salvation. Claramente el primero es la salvación. Let us read the Psalms chapter 4 verse 1 through 2. Vamos a leer el Salmo capítulo 4 versículo 1 2 otra vez. It says, Hear me when I call, O God, my righteousness. Thou has enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. O ye sons of men, how long will you turn my glory into shame? How long ye love vanity and seek after leasing Selah? More often than not, most of us have been in places at work, at school, or home, and even at church when someone may ask us, do you know what so-and-so said about you? That's where the, the, the rumors start, right? That's where the division at, at, in church start, when we're over here spreading rumors. Do you, do you, did you know who so-and-so said about you? Amen? Those rumors may not be true. They may be lying to you. Amen? Then they tell us the words that were used to tear down our reputation and our character. Generally, we feel anger and are eager to mount our defense at the accusations. That is not what David did. Naturalmente, cuando alguien nos está atacando nuestra reputación, un hombre en carne naturalmente va a querer este, tratar de defenderse y tratar de, este, de a lo mejor decir la misma mentira sobre la otra persona también. De, de, comenzar otros rumores también, ¿verdad? Pero David, eso no es lo que David hizo. David didn't do that. David no reaccionó en ese modo. Instead of going to the attack, he went to the place of prayer for salvation. En vez de atacar a esa, a esa gente, él se, él se puso, él se llegó en un lugar de, de oración por la salvación de ellos, para, la, para que Dios lo rescate a él, lo salve a él de esa situación. We must, whenever we are attacked by the enemy, we must fight it with prayer. Cuando el enemigo nos está atacando, nosotros tenemos que pelear por medio de oración. Por medio, el mejor modo de, 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 batall, de, de pelear contra el enemigo es oración. Amen. The best way that we can fight, that we can throw that jab to the enemy is through prayer. Amen. Amen. Through prayer. En las rodillas. Así es como se derrota al el enemigo. Right? That's how we can ask God to save us, to deliver us from those attacks. Right? That's how we can throw a left, how we can throw a jab. Right? That's how we can punch the enemy in the face. Right? With prayer. That's the only way to do things. Amen? Praise the Lord. That's why prayer is an important and powerful thing. Es por eso la oración es algo muy poderoso. It's very a powerful and a very important thing in our life. Prayer. That's how we can fight the enemy. That's how we can. That's how we can win the battles. That's how we can win the wars. Amen. Against the enemy. Así es como se puede ganar la la batalla sobre el enemigo, verdad? En las rodillas, en nuestro closet, en oración. Amen. Because there's power in the prayer. There's power in the name of Jesus. Amen. 
Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It says, the salvation that David needs at this moment is not that of an eternal nature, but rather from the circumstances that he finds himself in. That is reflected in the cry of the first two verses. Hear me, O Lord. Have mercy upon me. Hear my prayer. The Hebrew word for distress means a tight place. A lot of times we're a corner. I have this. El enemigo los pone en una esquina, ¿verdad? No sabemos cuál lugar y uh, en esas situaciones los ponemos en rodillas y, y oramos al Señor que los saca de esa situación. In those moments, we just get on our knees and we pray for God to deliver us, right? There's times when we feel cornered. I can't, hay situaciones que, está, que, que estamos en una situación que estamos esquinados, ¿verdad? No sabemos qué lugar de, de salir. The only one that can that, that will provide an escape is Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Señor, Praise God. It can also mean that there's an opponent crowding him into a narrow place. But David reaches into his past somewhere and stirs up his faith because he reminds God, you enlarged me when I was in distress. A lot of, time, a lot of times we got to remind God, Lord, there was times when you rescued me. And I know that you can rescue me. Hallelujah. Hay veces que tenemos que acordar al Señor en los tiempos cuando Él los ha rescatado, cuando, cuando Él los ha liberado. Y cuando dice, Señor, acuérdate cuando tú me liberaste, acuérdate cuando tú me salvaste de esta situación, yo sé que tú me puedes liberar. Yo sé que tú me puedes rescatar, amen. You, I know, amen. I know that you can rescue me. I know that you will help me in this situation, amen. We have to stand, stand out into faith. We have to step into faith. We have to step into faith by getting on our knees and praying. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Gloria a mi Cristo. Praise the Lord. Oh, God, Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. This kind of prayer builds up our faith. One of the avenues of our prayer ought to be the times when we can remind God of past victories, deliverances, and needs that, we, that, that were met, right? The Hebrew word enlarge means that God had whitened out the tight places in the past, and he knows that God can do the very same thing again for him. David makes his cry known to the mercy of God in his prayer. David realizes that only God could help him. He reflects that in verse 8. For thou, Lord, only. Amen. Aquí sabemos que, que David reflejó su fe en el Señor porque él sabe que solamente Dios lo puede rescatar de esos ataques. Amen. Porque el versículo dice, solamente tú, Señor, dice al fin de la... De, de la escritura. Solamente tú, Señor. Tú, solamente tú, Señor. Amen. Thou, Lord, only. Amen. Only you, God, can rescue me. Only you, God, can get in me out of the situation. I can do it on myself. Hay veces que tenemos que reconocer que nosotros no podemos hacer lo mismo. Amen. Tenemos que depender uh, este, completamente al Señor que lo rescate, que lo saque de esa situación. Amen. Only God can rescue us from that corner. Amen. Only God can find a way, and he would, and he will. He tells the Lord that his enemies are attacking in a certain way. They're turning from his glory into shame. They dishonor him by running his, ruining his reputation. They love vanity. They love what is worthless and aim at deception. Amen. They love lies and delusion and are opposed to his righteous life and his godly convictions. And there's a lot of people out there that are just jealous of what we have in God. Even, even our own Brothers and sisters in Christ have uh, somehow, some way, they grow in some kind of envy and the blessings that we have in our lives. Amen. Aquí está hablando claramente que 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 hay gente que que tiene que tiene envidia sobre nos sobre las bendiciones de cada uno que nosotros como seguidores de Cristo tenemos. ¿verdad? Es por eso la la la, la gente, la, el hombre secular trata de atacar a los cristianos porque tenemos algo que ellos quieren y están muy ciegos de saber cómo pueden tener lo mismo que nosotros tenemos hasta nuestros propios hermanos en Cristo también a veces tienen envidia sobre las bendiciones que uno tiene cuando otro está este, este batallando ¿verdad? ese es un gran error hermanos that is a great error we must be glad that, they are, that God has blessed them amen, amen. tenemos que estar or, or, este, tenemos que estar este, este, en gozo que ese hermano o hermana tenga bendiciones porque ese es 
la reacción apropiada que tenemos que tener por ahí. Si alguien, si, como puedo decir, si hay, un, si hay una iglesia que está más grande que el de nosotros, gloria a Dios. ¿verdad? Gloria a Dios, porque Dios ha grande, bendecido a esa iglesia. O un hermano o hermana, o, o este, un compañero de trabajo, él agarró una promoción. Yo tengo que estar, este, yo tengo que decir, congratulations, right? I have to be glad because he got the promotion, right? Amen. I can't be jealous, right? I can't be jealous or envious over someone else's successes because that's not the proper way I should act, right? I should be glad in it. I should be glad for them. I should praise them for their for God's blessing upon them, right? I shouldn't be jealous for God's favor for someone's for God's greater favor over someone else. Glory to God that God's favor is upon them. Amen. Glory to God because everything is to the glory of God. Porque todo es por la gloria de Dios. Amen. Es por eso no podemos estar envidiosos sobre otros, otros este, hermanos y hermanas que tienen más bendiciones que nosotros. Porque todo es por la gloria de Dios, no la gloria de nosotros. Right? It's not for our own glory, it's for the glory of God. Right? He appeals for relief from God. However, he is very clear in his understanding that even he is not a perfect man. Therein is his appeal for mercy of God. God have mercy upon me. You see me as I am and what my motives are in my heart. And but despite your own your own humanity, I need you for to help me. God and God will help us, right? Well, so a lot of times when we come to God, we have to come in humbleness. A veces cuando oramos al Señor, cuando ponemos a rodillas, hay que humillarnos ante Dios. Nuestro corazón tiene que estar íntegro ante el Dios, ¿verdad? Así para que Dios pueda decir. Pues tenemos que reconocer que nosotros no somos perfectos. Es lo que aquí David estaba diciendo, ¿verdad? En, en, el, uh, en las escrituras del versículo 1 y 2, estaba pidiendo la misericordia del Señor a él, ¿verdad? Porque David sabía que él no era perfecto, ¿verdad? Ese es, es, ese es el modo que David estaba demostrando su humillación a frente de Dios, ¿verdad? Su corazón íntegro al Señor. Pedir, Lord, per, Señor, perdóname por, por mis faltas. Señor, yo no soy perfecto. Limpa, límpiame mi corazón. Ayúdame, tenga misericordia sobre mí. Ayúdame, por favor. ¿verdad? We have to come to a place to God, right? We're in humbleness. Right? We, have to hum we have to humble ourselves before him. Say, Lord, forgive me for my trespasses, Father. I am imperfect. Help me. I can't do this on my own. Yo no puedo hacer esto mismo yo. ¿Verdad? Solamente tú, Dios, me puedes rescatar. Only you can rescue me. Amen? Amen. Amen. Only you, God, can rescue me. Praise God. <clears throat> And God will help us. That is the attitude that we must have as we make our appeals to God. Esa es la actitud espiritual que tenemos que tener cuando, cuando llegamos en oración ante Dios. ¿Verdad? Yeah, Una yeah. actitud de David que él tenía aquí, que él demostraba ante Dios. La segunda es santificación. The second one is sanctification. The second key word is sanctification. Let us read Psalms chapter 4, verse 3 to 4. Leyendo Salmos 3, uh, capítulo 4, versículo 3 y 4 otra vez. <clears throat> says, But know that the Lord has set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him, stand in awe and sin not. Right? Stand in awe and sin not. Aquí dice que, que está, aquí David está pidiendo al Señor que nos separe por su servicio a Dios, ¿verdad? Que, que, que aquí dice que no tenemos que andar este, cometiendo el pecado, ¿verdad? Que alejamos el pecado, ¿verdad? And it says, sin not, commune with your heart upon your bed and be still, say that. Aquí lo está enseñando David que tenemos que ponernos en lugar en cuando nomás tenemos que estar callados y nomás escuchar y meditar la palabra de Dios, ¿verdad? Hay a veces que hay gente que le gusta orar, ¿verdad? Pero hay a veces que tenemos que estar callados y nomás estar, este, estar en el cocín callados y escuchar lo que Dios quiere decir a nosotros, ¿verdad? A veces estamos muy este, ocupados pidiéndole y pidiéndole al Señor y todo eso, que queremos eso y queremos otro, pero a veces cuando, cuando, cuando Dios trata de comunicarse con nosotros, a veces tenemos que estar callados y lo más esperar que Dios hable a nuestro corazón. Sometimes when we come to the Lord, we pray and we do all the talking, but we are last sometimes we don't have God to do the talking. Right? A lot of times we just gotta be still. And know that he is God. El Señor, el... Right? 
eh, nosotros siempre, cuando estamos orando, nosotros siempre somos los que estamos comunicando a Dios, pues nunca dejamos a Él que comunique para atrás a nosotros, ¿verdad? Nosotros hablamos, los levantamos en nuestra oración y nos vamos, pero nunca dejamos a Él que, que comunique con nosotros, ¿verdad? So, it's really important that sometimes we just meditate in the Word and just stand there and be still and know that He is God. Amen? God is telling us to be still and know that I am God. That's what David was doing here. Aquí Dios está diciendo que estemos en silencio y sepamos que Él es Dios, que Él está en control, que Dios anda tratando de hablarle a nosotros, que Él está tratando de comunicarse a nosotros. El único modo que podemos oír la voz de Dios es estar callados en silencio. Amen? Es lo que David estaba haciendo aquí. ¿verdad? Be still and know that I am God. We see David's appeal for salvation in the first two verses, but now David places prayer in a, con con in a conditional realm. He talks about sanctification or holiness. Note in Psalms chapter 4 verse 3 where the Lord has set apart the godly for himself. Right? Because that man has been set apart in a place of holiness, God will hear the prayer of that man or woman of God. Amen? Holiness. Santificación es muy importante. Santificación y la oración es muy importante en la vida cristiana. Amen? There is nothing really mysterious about holiness, right? It's, it should be a way of life. Tiene que, ver, tiene que ser un modo de vivir en Cristo, ¿verdad? La santificación y la oración, es, es, eso va junto a junto, que, es, es, que tiene que ser la vida del cristiano, ¿verdad? Sanctification and prayer. Holiness and prayer. It's just the practical fruit of a man's life, a man, woman of God, who has been spirit-filled and worshiped. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18 says, Be not drunk with wine, where it is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Amen. Aquí está, no seas, no seas borracho con, con el vino en, en excesivo, pero sea lleno del Espíritu Santo. Amen. Ephesians Amen. capítulo 5 18, sea lleno en el Espíritu Santo. Be filled with the Spirit of God. Colossians chapter 3 verse 16, Colossenses 3 16, it says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Deja que la palabra de Cristo este, queda, dentro, este, queda dentro de ti completamente, ¿verdad? Let the word of God speak to you and dwell in you richly. ¿verdad? Sean enriquezados, ¿verdad? Enriquez, enriquezados de la palabra de Dios, ¿verdad? What's the greatest treasure? Right? What's, the, what's the, the, the richness that we should be filled in? It's the word of God. Man cannot live by bread alone, but by the words that proceed in the mouth of God. ¿Qué es uno de los grandes tesoros del mundo en la, en la vida del cristiano, verdad? ¿Qué es lo que tenemos que enriquecernos a nosotros en nuestras vidas? Es la palabra de Dios, right? Because man cannot, que el hombre no puede vivir con pan solamente, pero por lo que sale de la boca de, de Dios, ¿verdad? Que es la palabra de Dios. En, en lo que sale de la boca del Señor es lo que tenemos que enriquecernos a nosotros. That's what we must enrich ourselves, right? In our lives. Let the word of God, Christ, dwell in you richly, it says. Amen? There's a pattern in that verse. Sanctification is separation from ungodliness and separation to the service of God. Amen. La santificación es separación de lo que es lo que no es de Dios y separación para Dios. Amen. Es separación para el servicio al Señor y separación de las cosas malas, ¿verdad? Separation from the old life. Separation to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord makes a person godly and then he sets the person apart for himself. Being set apart for God makes us love the things we once hated and hate the things we once loved, right? Because God loves the person, but he hates the sin that binds them, right? That's the way we're supposed to be. When we're believers, when, when we fail God, we're supposed to hate that part of ourselves, right? We're supposed to hate that sinfulness, that, that flesh that, that's causing us to behave in such a way that is not, uh, uh, that is not according to the word of God. Right? All of us are imperfect, right? We should hate uh, the, the, the sinful nature of our, of our flesh, right? Nosotros tenemos que este, lo, lo que la santificación hace lo que la separación de, de lo malo y la separación con Dios 
este, lo que tiene que causar a nosotros es amar lo que, lo que son cosas de Dios y odiar lo que no es de Dios, ¿verdad? Igualmente Dios ama a la, a la humanidad, pero Él odia el pecado que, que tiene a la persona, a la humanidad encadenada, right? There's people that say that God loves to sin. There's a little bit of fallacy in that, brothers and sisters. Okay? Because he loves mankind. He says, he, he, said, he said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Right? He loves the humanity, but he hates the sin that binds them. Amen? So when I say that God loves the people, he loves people, but he hates the, the sin that binds them. Okay? That's the great fallacy about when someone says God loves the sin. Amen. God loves the, the creation, the, the one who created in his own image, but he loves the sin that binds them. Amen. That's why God sent his only begotten son. So those who believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. Hay un dicho americano que dice que Dios ama al pecador. Al pecador ¿Verdad? Es en un modo, si, lo, si, de veras, si de veras piensas, es un poco, es, una, es, un, es un dicho falso. Porque Dios ama a la persona, pero odia al pecado que lo tiene encadenado. So Dios no ama al pecador, Él ama a la persona, la creación que fue creado en su semejanza, ¿verdad? Él ama a, lo, a la humanidad que fue creado por, por su propia este, semejanza, pero Él ama, Él odia el pecado que lo tiene encadenado, que lo tiene como esclavo con el enemigo, ¿verdad? Igualmente nosotros tenemos que amar las cosas de Dios y tenemos que odiar las cosas que no son de Dios. Amen. The same way, we should love the things of God and we should hate the things that are not of God. Amen. So that's the difference. That's the love and hate relationship, right? If so to speak. That we hate the things that are sinful and we love the things of God. ¿Verdad? Esa es la relación de odio y amor, ¿verdad? Nosotros odiamos lo, lo, lo que es pecado y amamos las cosas de Dios, ¿verdad? We love the things of God. We love the word of God. Amamos la palabra de Dios. Amamos a Dios con todo nuestro alma, nuestro corazón, nuestra mente y nuestras fuerzas, ¿verdad? We love the Lord our, our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with our mind and strength. We love our neighbors ourselves. Amamos a la humanidad como nosotros, ¿verdad? Love thy neighbor. It doesn't say love that sinner. It says, love thy neighbor, the humanity, amen, as ourselves. Because all humanity were created in God's image and in his own likeness. Amen. Praise the Lord. El Señor, por el Dios, el Dios. Praise the Lord. Once Jesus Christ gains the preeminence in our lives, we can understand these matters of holiness as never before. People who have given the given their life to the Lord complete control in their lives never quibble or chat at holiness. In fact, their whole life is intent on doing things that will please the Lord. Amen. Because it is impossible without faith, it is impossible to please the Lord. Sin la fe, it is impossible de agradecer al Señor. Amen. Y como cre, como cre, como este, uh, hijos de Dios. Este, tenemos la, la, la habilidad de amar las cosas de Dios de, de ser obediente a la palabra de Dios ¿verdad? porque eso fue este, puesto adentro de nuestros corazones por medio del poder del Espíritu Santo it was through the, it's through the Holy Spirit that we, that, that, that we chat at holy that, 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 we, uh, that we never quibble or chat at holiness in other words we, we would never if you feel the Holy Ghost we would never dismiss holiness Right? We wouldn't say, ah, that, that's not, that's not, that's not important. ¿Verdad? In other words, porque hay gente, hermanos, there are people out there that chat at holiness, that say that sanctification is faith, that it's not important. Hay gente en otras religiones, otras iglesias, que dicen que la santificación no es tan importante. ¿Verdad? Que lo que es importante es su salvación y es todo. Pero no pone nada de atención este, la santificación y, y vivir este, en santidad ante Dios ¿verdad? that's a huge mistake eso es un gran error de, 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 los, de los creyentes que no, que no viven en, en santidad lo mejor que pueden hacer the best to our ability that God has given us 
Tenemos que agradecer al Señor. We have to live a life that's pleasing to the Lord. Those who love the, lo the world will always be at odds with holiness. To to la gente que ama al mundo siempre va a estar contra las cosas de santidad. Amen, ¿es cierto? El mundo ama uh, estas las cosas del mundo y siempre va a estar contra la santidad. Los cristianos, los cristianos, ¿verdad? Los cristianos que dicen que son cristianos, que hablan las cosas del mundo, van a estar siempre contra la santidad. ¿verdad? Porque quieren hacer, quieren ser amigos con, la, con el mundo. They want to continue being friends with the world, right? Remember, if we are friends of the world, of things, of the simple things of the world, then we are in enmity with God. Si somos amigos hacia las cosas malas del mundo, somos enemigos de Dios. ¿verdad? Eso es lo que la palabra de Dios dice. ¿verdad? But we're supposed to love the things of God, right? We're supposed to be uh, of, we're supposed to be of God, not of the world. Tenemos que ser de Dios, no del mundo. ¿verdad? We're supposed to be of God. We're supposed to love things of God, right? We're supposed to love God. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you are having problems with holiness, then you might want to consider to whom you have given your allegiances to. Amen? I know that's a hard thing to hear, brothers and sisters. If you have problems with holiness, if you're struggling with it, then you might want to consider to whom you have given your allegiances to. Amen? The Lord has set apart him that is godly for himself, for God himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto Him. Those who are always saying that God does not answer prayer might want to check to whom they have been set apart to. Amen? Because God keeps His promises. Amen? Sanctification is loving the things of God, the prayer meetings, the worship services, the Word of God, the Psalms of Zion, the Bible studies, and the fellowship of the saints. Personal godliness will always be linked to personal goodness. Amen? There is an outflow of holiness that specifically follows in Psalm chapter 4, verse 4. Stand in awe and sin not. Right? Stand in awe of the Lord. Right? And sin not. Be still and know that He is God. However, these two verses are really being addressed to the enemies of David. He tells them that they need to be aware of the man whom God has set apart and that they need not to vent their anger toward him. Lord, let not them touch your anointed. Amen. Amen. Let them not touch their anointed. Amen. Praise the Lord. David tells these enemies of God that they are not to fall to their anger and go after him. Anger can ruin the best of men. When we are making application to this verse, even though it is, uh, it is for the enemies of David, there is solid truth here for the saint also. We may, turn, we, we may turn it around and say to ourselves that we ought not to give in to the anger at our enemies who are trashing your good name and reputation. There are times that anger pulls at every saint of God, but there is nothing like anger that impales us in areas of personal holiness. We must watch our temper. A veces que tenemos que tener cuidado con nuestro coraje, de no dejar nuestro coraje que toma, que, que destruye nuestra santidad. Amen. So, in areas of personal holiness, we must never give in to our anger. Amen. We must not go to sleep in anger and wake up in anger. He that would be angry and not sin must be angry at nothing but sin. Amen. Francis Havergal also said, quick, angry motions of the heart will sometimes force themselves into expression by the hand, though the tongue may be restrained. The very the very way in which we close a door or lay or lay down a book may be a victory or defeat. In other words, 
the way we react to situations will give us victory or defeat in our anger. Amen? How we react will say what kind of character we have. El modo que reaccionamos hasta cosas pequeñas, ¿verdad? Que, que, los, que, que los hace enojar. Si, si, este, si estoy enojado y hago eso, eso ve el carácter que yo tengo. ¿Verdad? Si lo pongo así, eso se mira a mi carácter como yo soy, que yo, que yo tengo, que yo sé como calmar, ¿verdad? Que yo estoy en calma. So, how we react to it, right? Even the simplest things that anger us or gets on our nerves will say a lot about us. El modo que reaccionamos va a decir mucho de nosotros, como nosotros reaccionamos. Vamos a, a, este, a cerrar la puerta muy fuerte o lo vamos a cerrar con cuidado, ¿verdad? How we react says a lot about our character. Glory How we react Jesus, towards right? the enemy, right? Praise the Lord. An anonymous person once said, anger is an acid that can do more harm to the vessel in which it's stored than anything on which it's poured. In other words, you're going to do yourself more damage than you're doing to the other person you, you're lashing out in your anger. Amen? En otras palabras, hay un dicho americano que, que trata de decir, hermanos, que el, este, que el que le... El daño va a pasar más a la persona, a la persona que, está, la, este, que está reaccionando en su, en su, uh, en su coraje en vez de la persona que es tú. Este, uh, en otras palabras, el daño va a ser más para ti. Espiritualmente, en tu corazón y, va, y, y el, por el resto de su vida siempre vas a estar en, cora, en corajudo, corajudo, corajuda, corajuda. Tú te vas a hacer más daño a ti mismo de, de que a la persona que tú estás contestando para atrás, ¿verdad? El daño más es más para ti. The, da the damage will, will be much worse for yourself because you will continue, you continue living a life of bitterness, right? The bitterness will just eat you alive, it will just consume you, and every time someone get, wants to talk to you, you end up lashing out, and people don't want to uh, associate with you. Right. Amen? It does does more damage to you with your relationships with others. Hace mucho más daño en ti mismo con tus relaciones con otras personas, ¿verdad? Si alguien nomás simplemente quiere hablar contigo y luego tú este, reaccionas con coraje, la gente no va a querer hablar contigo, ¿verdad? Va a destruir las relaciones, va a destruir tu, tu vida, destruir tu vida a lo largo. Siempre vas a estar en coraje, coraje, coraje cada rato. Amén. Proverbs 29, verse 11. Proverbios 29, 11 dice esto. And then I says, Fools get full bent to their rage, but the wives bring calm in the end. Right? It's how we react. Do we act calm? Proverbios dice, la, esta, la, 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 la gente, la gente que, este, que, naturalmente la gente, este, reacciona en su coraje pero los que son sabios traen calma en la situación ¿verdad? la gente que no son sabios van a reaccionar en su carne ¿verdad? pero la gente sabia en el Señor traen calma en la situación right? a man or woman of God should be a, a peacemaker right? should be a man or woman of peace el, 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 el hijo, el hombre o la mujer de Dios tiene que ser una persona de paz, ¿verdad? saber cómo traer cosas, la situación tensa en calma. Right? We're supposed to be the world's peacemakers. We're supposed to know how to calm things down. Right? That's, that's a spiritual gift, brothers and sisters. Ese es, un, ese es un fruto espíritu que cada uno tenemos que hacer, que tenemos que tener, saber cómo calmar la situación. No, 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 no participar parte del coraje participar en la paz ¿verdad? como saber cómo calmar la situación we must know how to calm things down in the end right? that's what Proverbs 29 says number three sacrifice oh, yeah. tercer es el sacrificio the third key word is sacrifice let us read Psalms 4 number 5 again Salmos 4 5 otra vez offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. Ofrece tus, los sacrificios de la justicia y pon tu confianza en el Señor. Amen. So it takes sacrifice, brothers and sisters. It says that is the matter of worship. It's 
el modo de alabanza al Señor. ¿Verdad? It's a matter of worship. True worship is always accompanied by righteous sacrifices. There were two basic kinds of sacrifices the people of the Old Testament could bring to the altar. It was a sweet savor offering or a sin offering. Amen? The sacrifice of sweet savor was that came from a righteous saint. The sacrifice of sin offering was what accompanied a repentant sinner. David was encouraging the sacrifices of righteousness. For example, the burnt offering, it was for God, all for God. The, the, type that was the, that, the type that was that offering of the Lord, oh, yeah, Philippians 2, verse 8 says, obedient to death, even to death on a cross, right? Jesus Christ laid down that example, right? He sacrificed himself even unto death to the cross. ¿verdad? El gran ejemplo del sacrificio fue lo que nuestro Señor demostró, ¿verdad? Él demostró su sacrificio hasta la, hasta la muerte en la cruz. Right? That's how we should react in every single situation when we deal with people, when we deal with God. Right? It says, obedient to death, even death unto the cross. In other words, it has to be a sacrifice, right? says, the second one is the meal offering, an offering of flour which was smooth and pure. The type was that of the perfection of the Lord. The flour has been grounded to perfection until it was flawless in texture. His life was sinless, perfect life, right? The Lord was, 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 was the unleavened bread of, of, of God, right? Praise the Lord. That's why he were, that's why he presented the, the 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 unleavened bread on the on the Lord's supper, right? The unleavened bread it represented the the, the it represented the body of Christ. It, it it represented His flesh, right? Broken for us. That's why He broke it, right? Broken body on the cross, and it was unleavened bread. It was perfect and it was sinless, right? It was the symbolism that Jesus Christ was teaching us how we are should be as well, how we are to remember what Christ did for us. Amen. Praise the Lord. The last one is the peace offering. This offering brought the worshiper and God together in the communion of the ceremonial meal. The peace offering is a type of, of the presence of the Lord, right? Because the one that gives us peace is Jesus Christ, right? Peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, I give unto you, he says, right? So it's a type of the presence of the Lord. Peace is the presence of the Lord, right? And la paz. La paz es en la presencia del Señor. ¿Verdad? Porque es Cristo que nos da la paz. No la paz que el Dios, Dios que el mundo da. Es la paz que Dios lo, que Dios lo da. ¿Verdad? Es la paz de Cristo. Eso significa la, que estamos en la presencia del Señor. ¿Verdad? Cuando, cuando vemos todo el mundo destruyéndose cada uno, pero nosotros estamos en, en paz y en tranquilidad, estamos en la presencia del Señor. Right? When we see the whole world destroying each other, but we, and we as believers are in peace and joy and tranquility, we are in we are we are in faith in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. David pulls all these things together, all these three things together, and tells us that we are to live a life that exalts and honor God. Amen. Through the Lord's suffering in the shadow of the cross, we are to live a crucified life. Right? Amen. We are crucified with Christ, right? There's a song that says that we are crucified with Christ. Through the Lord's perfection, we are to live a parallel life of holiness and allow the indwelling Holy Ghost inside of us to guide us, right? We are to allow the counselor to lead us into all truth, amen? To guide us into everything. Through the Lord's presence, we are to live a life that is constant communion with Him. Not only taking a part in communion at the Lord's table, but in our everyday life as well. In other words, we are to sup with the Lord as He sups with us every single day. Amen. En otras palabras, tenemos que comunar con el Señor igual como quiere comunar con nosotros, ¿verdad? El día nosotros que tener no más es bueno, es bonito ¿verdad? tener comunión cada cuarto del año, ¿verdad? Cuando te, cuando te, tomamos comunión con el pan y, 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 y el, el, el grape juice representando el cuerpo y la sangre del, del Señor, ¿verdad? Pero también Dios quiere tener comunión ca, con cada uno de nosotros cada día. We have to have that communion, that experience with God every day, ¿verdad? Not just on communion, right? Not just on communion Sunday, but every day of our lives. ¿verdad? El Señor desea tener comunión con cada uno de ustedes, hermanos. Amen. 
no nomás el domingo de comunión, pero comunión con él todos los días. You can now see a picture of what Psalms chapter 4 verse 5 means when it tells us to offer up sacrifices of righteousness. Our trust in the Lord is strengthened by our commitment to the, this kind of living. Amen. El número cuatro es el canto, ¿verdad? Psalm. And, we're ta and I'm talking about uh, Psalms chapter 4, verse 6 through 7. Again, let me read. There be many that say, who will show us any good? Lord, lift that, let thou up the light of thy countenance upon us. Thou hast put gladness in my heart more than in the time that their corn and their wine increased. Amen? In other words, we had David's salvation, sanctification, we had sacrifice, and now we have psalm, right? David's heart was started to turn from the attacks of those on him to the power of the Lord. Amen? A lot of times we're, you know what? I'm just going to give this to the Lord, and I'm just going to focus and meditate on the Lord. Hay a veces que tenemos que dejar las cosas que nos están pasando, dáselos al Señor, y sabes que yo los voy a meditar en el Señor. Yo no voy a estar en paz en el Señor. Yo no voy a estar, voy a estar en gozo en el Señor. No, pasa, no importa lo que está pasando alrededor de mí. Yo voy a estar en gozo y en paz con el Señor. Amen. Sometimes we just got to do that, brothers and sisters. Because if we don't do that, we're, it's that the enemy will begin to creep in and attack. Right? Then the depression seeps, seeps in. Amen. We should not allow that. We should allow God to seep in in our lives. Amen. Praise the Lord. David's heart was started to run from the attacks of those on him to the power of the Lord. That same pattern at some point will have to be learned by all of us who serve God. Amen. We have to turn our eyes and ears from the accusers and turn our hearts and minds to the one who rules the universe, right? Be still and know. Be still and know that he is God, right? We got to focus. We have to seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these shall be added unto us. Peace, love, tranquility. Right? Safety. Blessings. The promises of God. Right? Be still and know. Be still and know. Stay in silencio y sepa que Dios está en control. Amen? Amen. Be still and know that he rules the universe. David repeats the question of those who are under the siege of the enemies. Can God still show us favor again? Here's what, where David's remembrance of Scripture proved to be the great encouragement. He remembered something from the book of Numbers. Namely, in Numeros, capítulo 6, versículo 24, 26, David se estaba uh, acordando algo que nos va a dar gran ánimo a, a cada persona aquí. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. Amen. The Lord make his count make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen. Esa, 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 esa escritura, esta palabra de Dios es un, es un, este, un ánimo al, al, al creyente del Señor. Amen. The Lord bless thee. Let me repeat it again because it's beautiful. It says, the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his, his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen? Amen. That's how we are to meditate in the Lord. Amen. No matter what's happening, this, this pandemic, the, the, the lockdowns, the, the, the riots and everything that's going on, I am in peace. No matter what happens, it says, give thee peace. May the Lord give thee peace. Que el Señor te dé paz. No pasa lo que pasa, ¿verdad? Toda la destrucción. La, 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 la pandemia, el coronavirus, la gente este, comportándose el modo que están comportando, toda la destrucción que está pasando, nosotros podemos estar en paz y podemos repetir esta, esta, esta palabra de Dios a nosotros. Es decir, the Lord bless thee, que el Señor te, te bendiga y que te guarde, ¿verdad? Que Dios te guarde y que, que Dios te bendiga. Que el favor del Señor está con, con, este, a ti y tenga gracia a ti. ¿Verdad? Que Dios que te levante y que te dé fe, que te dé paz. May God lift you up, right? May the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. You can count on the Lord to help you at all times. Podemos contar con el Señor que los, que los, los va a ayudar en todas situaciones. 
No matter the circumstances, God's will and purpose will always prevail. Amen. The result of David's prayer was that the Lord had put joy in his heart. Again, before David's prayer had changed his circumstances, it had changed him. That is one of the benefits of prayer, right? The, our prayer changes us. It changes our perspective, right? It changes our attitude, amen? It, cha it changes in a way that we're always going to seek the Lord, right? First seek, first seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things shall be added unto you. Amen? It's one of the benefits of prayer. Seeking God. Seeking after his heart. Right? David was a man after God's own heart. Right? Each of us should be seeking after God's own heart. ¿verdad? Aquí David sabemos que estaba, eh, estaba persiguiendo el corazón del Señor. ¿verdad? Eh, nosotros también tenemos que hacer la misma cosa, persiguiendo el corazón de los, del Señor. Que nuestro corazón está, está al mismo ritmo del Señor. ¿verdad? Cada vez que nuestro corazón está así, que está en el mismo ritmo del Señor. When a man of God seeks after the word, the, after the heart of God, his heart beats as the, the heart of God beats. Amen. Where uh, their heart is in sync with God's heart. Amen. That's how David was talking about. It. That's how David was going on. How many times have we lived in our personal closet of prayer and God has changed us before He changed our situation? How many times has just has just a feeble prayer changed our heart before the trial got better? How many times has the Lord answered a prayer in our heart before it be, ever came to pass in front of our eyes? Right? In other words, how many times has God healed a broken heart before he actually, uh, before we actually see the solution that God had for us? Right? How many times did, did God not brought peace in our hearts? Amen? So we can be able to deal with that situation. That's what prayer does, right? It brings a peace. It brings a, a tranquility. It brings a, a kind of meditation. And you know what? I'm just going to sit here and just absorb and, and just uh, take in the presence of the Lord. Amen? Be still and know that He is God. Amen? Amen. 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 David thought of the times of harvest and plenty when the corn was overflowing the farms and the wine was overflowing the vessels. He said that the Lord had put more joy in his heart than those times of victory. Amen? Some commentators connect Psalms chapter 3 and Psalms chapter 4. They say that Psalm chapter 3 was the morning after David fled Jerusalem and was running from Absalom. They say that Psalm chapter 4 was developed in the day as he ran from Absalom in the flight God began to build his faith up again. If that is the case, then here is what we have to understand. David's spirit soared after he lost the palace, a full table, and some money, material things. David's spirit soared because he had God. His joy was in God and not in his goods, right? That is when the song can really work in, our, in your soul, when you are free from the dependence on the trappings of this world. Right? Aquí David este estaba, este, él estaba más enfocado en las cosas de Dios, no en, la, no en los ataques que él estaba recibiendo. En este momento en las escrituras, él está enfocado a Dios. Es lo que le pasa a veces a la, a la, a la humanidad, es lo que le pasa a veces a los cristianos, ¿verdad? Están, están muy preocupados lo que está pasando en el mundo, están muy preocupados lo que está pasando alrededor de ustedes, el, el, que perdieron el trabajo, o lo que sea lo que es, pero, este, pero se olvidan de estar enfocado mejor a Dios. Right? We're so focused on material things, we're so focused on other things, but we don't uh, meditate on God. Right? We don't seek ye first. Right? We don't seek the kingdom of God. Nunca pers no estamos este persiguiendo el reino de Dios, ¿verdad? Es lo que tenemos que hacer primero, ¿verdad? Tenemos que perseguir el reino de Dios. Seek ye the kingdom. Right? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. If you're going through trouble, seek ye first the kingdom. Si estás pasando por una por, por este tiempo por este difícil, persiga al Señor primero. Siga al, al reino de Dios primero. ¿verdad? En oración. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Right? Seek God first in everything. Busca al Señor en todas las cosas. Siempre busca el reino de Dios primero. Si están pasando por una cosa, 
Busca al Señor primero. Amen. Don't be looking at the material things. Don't be focusing your eyes on things. Fix your eyes on Christ. ¿Verdad? Fija tus ojos al Señor. Busca al reino de Dios. Amen. Depend on God and not on the things of the world. Tu dependencia debe estar en Dios, no en las cosas del mundo. ¿Verdad? Tu dependencia debe estar en Dios, no en las, no en las preocupaciones. ¿Verdad? Tu, tu dependencia debe estar a Dios, no en las cosas negativas. Amén. Número 5 es seguridad. Y con este, me, con este, este termino. Psalms chapter 4, verse 8. The final key word is security. Let us read Psalms chapter 4, verse 8. One more time. Vamos a leer la, la escritura en Salmos capítulo 8. It says, I will both lay me down in peace and sleep. Yo me voy a acostar en paz y voy a dormir. For thou, Lord, only makest me dwell in safety. Solamente tú, Señor, me haces vivir en seguridad. Amen. So aquí David estaba en paz, ¿verdad? Estaba viviendo en seguridad porque sabía que Dios lo estaba cuidando, ¿verdad? Cuando él, cuando el hermano o hermana de Dios, este, sabe que Dios está con, con ellos, que Dios está en control, ellos, ellos pueden dormir en paz, sin preocupación, ¿verdad? When, when, we, when we know that God is in control, that we are under His safety, we can sleep well, right? We can sleep in peace, right? We can sleep in under the safety of God. David could sleep in peace. There had been a time when he could sleep in the security of his palace because there was armed soldiers who patrolled the courtyards and kept the gates. That was no longer available for him, right? People were uh, attacking him from side to side. People were verbally speaking uh, lies about him, right? Now he was sleeping in the countryside. But he was safer here than he had been in that palace. Soldiers were, swat, were watched there and God was watching him here. Right? It's better to be under the protection of God than to be the, under the protection of man. Right? El más mejor estar bajo la protección de Dios de la protección de la humanidad. Right? Porque la humanidad te puede fracasar, pero Dios no te va a fracasar. It's better to be under the protection of God than of man. Amen? Praise the Lord. If you can leave your prayers to the Lord in your day of trust, He can take care of you. Not only does He take care of them, He allows us to sleep in peace. Even though you may serve the Lord, no one will be immune from the attack of their reputation, right? Each of us are going to go through that, right? There, there are going to become a time as believers that we're going to have people that are going to hate us. Because again, Jesus says that, that they will hate you for my name's sake. Mm -hmm. eh? But no, cada cristiano en nuestra, en nuestra vida, en el trabajo hay, o, en, o en el público, hay gente que va a odiar al cristiano. Eh? Porque, porque Jesucristo dijo que ellos te van a odiar por mí, no, por, por, por mí no. Right? They're, they're, they're going to hate you for my name's sake. Ellos te van a odiar por mí no. Porque eres cristiano, te van a odiar. Right? And there's many people that do hate Christians, right? There are many people that do hate God. Hay mucha gente que sí odia a los cristianos y odia a Dios. Amen? Because, because we are different from them because we don't want to give in to their ways of life. Right? Because of that, they hate us. Right? They think that we're losers. They think that we're lame. But, uh, uh, but, but we are called to be different. We're called to be of God and not be of the world. Amen. Right? Praise the Lord. But instead of attacking, make it a matter of prayer. Right? We should, we, the, what this message teaches how we should react towards those who attack us. Right? We pray. Right? We pray. Oramos. Es, lo que, es, es el modo que tenemos que reaccionar cuando la gente está atacando o está odiando a nosotros. Estar en oración. Es el único modo que podemos estar en batalla 
y tener victoria en Cristo sobre el enemigo, sobre los ataques, si no nos ponemos en rodillas. Amen. That's the only way that we can throw a good uppercut, a good jab, right? It's through prayer, right? How else are we going to do the knockout punch if we don't do it in prayer? Amen. It's the only way to defeat the enemy. Es el único modo que hemos derrotado al enemigo. Que hemos derrotado esos ataques contra nosotros. That is the most effective and spiritual way to deal with people who slander you. Right? We pray for their salvation. Oramos por la salvación de nuestros enemigos. ¿Verdad? Así es también como podemos reaccionar. Estar en oración por ellos. Lord, Dios tenga misericordia sobre él. Sálvalos, Señor, por favor. We wish salvation and repentance for them. We don't wish them to get what they deserve. We let God decide that. No tenemos que orar que ellos merecen lo que les lo que les merecen. Eso se lo dejamos a Dios. Nosotros nuestro nuestro trabajo es es pedir que Dios los los perdone y que los salve su alma, ¿verdad? No pedir Dios por favor este que que que, que yo quiero que ellos paguen lo que lo que se merecen. We can't do that. We have to leave that to God. God is the one who decides if he, if he judges them or not. Dios es el juez. Él es el que los va a juzgar si no se arrepienten. Lo que nosotros tenemos que hacer es pedir, pedir a Dios que los salve a ellos, que ellos cuenten en, en Cristo. Todo, hay mucha gente que, que han matado, mata, mata, este, que, que son este, psicópatas y todo eso que han cometido tan grandes crímenes, ¿verdad? Yo oro que ellos se encuentren a Cristo. I pray that those prisoners that are murderers, uh, slanderers, or whatever it is they committed, liars, thieves, I pray for their salvation. Right? That's what we are to do. We do that through prayer, brothers and sisters. That's how prayer gives us a different perspective, right? We start wishing well for them, not wishing curse for them. ¿verdad? En oración nos cambia nuestro perspectivo, ¿verdad? Nos cambia, nos, nos cambia nuestra actitud y, y mejor deseamos bendiciones sobre nuestros enemigos, ¿verdad? Que Dios los salve, que, que Dios este, tenga misericordia y que los perdone. Right? We wish God to, to forgive them. Father, forgive them for that they know not what they do. ¿Qué es lo que Cristo dijo a los que lo estaban este, poniendo a la cruz? Señor, Padre, perdónanos porque ellos no saben lo que están haciendo. Same thing. We must have the heart of the Father, right? If we are to seek after the, the heart of the Father, we are to behave in the same way. Amen? Father, forgive them for they know not what they're doing. Father, forgive them. Señor, perdónanos porque no saben lo que están haciendo. Amen? Call upon the name of the Lord. When we will call, when we call unto the Lord with a life that models holiness, He will hear us. You will discover that it is in the painful moments of life that God will provide you with the necessary support to fight one more day. Right? When we're in holiness, fighting in holiness, that's when God provides a way. Amen? Cuando nosotros estamos en batalla, ¿verdad? En santidad, cuando estamos orando y alguien nos está tocando, este, atacando, sabemos que Dios esto los va a ayudar en, esa, en ese aspecto. God will help us when we're fighting in the holy way, the holy war against the enemy. Amen. He will provide what's necessary to support the fight one more day, to take one step at a time. Tomar, tomar un paso a paso, ¿verdad? Él nos da el pan de cada día. Él nos da su palabra cada día para poder estar en batalla cada día. Right? He's the lamp unto our feet and the light unto our path. Él es nuestra lámpara de cada paso que tomamos, ¿verdad? Y Él es la luz de nuestro camino. Right? We fight one day at a time. And to do the will of the Lord. ¿verdad? Cada día tenemos que andar en camino. Estamos tenemos que estar este, tomando paso a paso y caminando ese camino, ¿verdad? Angosto, en la voluntad del Señor. Amen. We must do it in the will of the Lord. That's how we respond to people that attack us. Ese es el modo que tenemos que responder cuando otra gente nos está, o cuando el enemigo nos está atacando a nosotros. En 
oración. Amen. In prayer. Amen. Let us stand this morning. That's a part of the fiesta mañana. We must take the higher ground. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, God, as I open the altar of prayer this morning. Señor, toca nuestros corazones en este momento que estoy abriendo el altar de oración esta mañana, Señor. Da, danos este, Señor, ayúdanos a estar en tu presencia. Señor, ayúdanos a reaccionar contra nuestros enemigos en el modo que es de Dios, Señor. Ayúdanos a este, 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 reaccionar en oración siempre, Señor. Ayúdanos, Señor, a reaccionar en el modo que te complace a ti, Señor. Father, help us react in, 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 uh, in a way that pleases you, Father. Because your scripture says that without faith, it is impossible to please you, Father. And I'm asking that you help us understand, Father, that you, help, that you hear us when we call, O oh God, of my righteousness. Thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. Father, we ask this, Lord, as we pray this prayer, Lord Jesus, hallelujah, that you hear our prayers, that you help us when we are attacked. Oh, you sons of men, how long will you turn my glory into shame? How long will you love vanity and seek after releasing Salem? But know that the Lord has set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still, say love. Be still and know that he is God. We are still, Lord. Help us have a time of quietness where we hear what you uh, want to instruct us, Father. Help us, Lord, just to be still, just to be quiet and just listen to your voice. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Not for the sacrifices of righteousness and which you trust in the Lord. There be many that say, who will show us any good. Lord, lift thou up the light of thy countenance upon us. Thou hast put gladness in my heart more than in, in, more than in the time when, when there was blessing, more than there in time when we were in victory. I will both lay me down in peace and sleep for you, Lord. Only make us be dwell in safety. Father, I pray this prayer of safety for every believer that is here. Father, I pray that you keep us safe under your arms. Father, I pray that you keep us safe under your, under your blood, the Jesus. Father, I pray a hedge of protection around us. Father, I pray the blood of Jesus Christ to cover the doorposts of our hearts, the doorposts of this building, the doorposts of our homes. Hallelujah. Praise God. Father, that way when the when, when things pass oh, pass by, it will just skip over us and not touch us, O oh Lord. Bless us, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Have your way with us, O oh Lord. Bless us. Strengthen us this morning, O oh Lord. Thank you, God. Bless us, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Have your way with us, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. Amen.